Hello everybody. In this episode, we're going to be talking about this little guy here. Now, we call this a PRV, which stands for pressure regulating valve or pressure reducing valve because it actually does both. Uh, now, this little guy is one we use in our residential application. It's a three-quarter. Uh, it's got a pressure range uh, between 75 and 25 PSI. It's PEX ready. Uh, which is that polyethylene tubing. It's got the fittings made onto it. Uh, but you can get them in a variety of different sizes, a variety of different pressure ranges, and a variety of different adapters. You can get them with unions, you can get them sweat ready, um, all kinds of different ones out there. Now, what we use these for is to regulate the pressure or to reduce the pressure. Now, typically for us, we're reducing the pressure because we're on a city system that's a constant, say, 120 PSI coming into that house. And we want to regulate it down to, or reduce it, sorry, to uh, 75 PSI. So that's what we're going to do with it. The other thing why this would be called a pressure regulating valve, say you've got a booster pump or something that's really varying in its pressures, say somewhere in between 60 and 80 PSI, uh, you can use this guy to hit that target of 75 PSI because of the way the little valves and stuff in here work. Um, so now we're going to talk about what's inside of here because these things are repairable. You can take them apart. You can take all the guts out of them and put them all back together. So let's break one down. All right, so I already went ahead and took this guy apart. And we're gonna start at the top here. Uh, the first thing you're gonna see is uh, it's a bolt. It's just a bolt with an extra little nut. And that's so you can lock your pressure setting in place when you get it where you want it. And that goes in the top of the cap here. Now, this next part is just simply a cap. It's your spring cover. Uh, it does have your rating sticker on the front of it, but it's just a plastic cap that's going to cover your spring assembly. Now, uh, if you ever take one of these apart, you got to be really careful because there is a spring cap or spring seat here. Uh, it's a little domed thing, and what that's for is it goes in the top of your spring. If you're taking this thing apart and this all flies apart on you and you lose your little spring cap, uh, it's no longer going to work because that bolt is just going to fall through that spring. That's what this cap is for. And so it rides on that bolt and you can tighten uh, this spring down. Uh, the next part here, uh, a lot of things come as a cartridge nowadays. So it makes it easier to replace. Now there's a couple pieces in here, but you're pretty much not going to take it apart any farther than this. Um, it's got a screen, a filter screen here. Now this is something that can get clogged with sand and dirt and debris either at construction or over time. So if you're having a problem with low pressure, you might want to check this screen and make sure it's not full of gunk. Uh, the next thing you've got is a diaphragm up here. It's this little rubber piece. And now this is kind of like a balloon. It's going to swell and uh, contract as the pressure goes. And then at the very bottom, you've got the valve part. Now, they call this a poppet, which I think is, is kind of interesting. Some people just call it a set valve or something like that, but it's called a poppet because it's going to pop open with the pressure. Now, the last part you've got here is uh, the body of the valve itself. Now, when all this is put together, this is actually two chambers. There's the inlet chamber and an outlet chamber. And if you don't line it up right with that arrow, with your rate of flow, it's not going to work. That valve, that little poppet is going to slam shut on you and no water is going to get through it. Uh, this particular one, if you see there's a little hole there, this one actually works on the outgoing pressure uh, to regulate that pressure or reduce that pressure. It's measuring it on that outgoing pressure. Uh, some of them measure it using the ingoing pressure. Um, it's pretty complicated, but it's real simple. It's simple parts. I don't know who came up with this thing, but somebody was really thinking. So there's your parts, and of course this will all go back together. Um, remember, don't lose that. That's a very important piece. Um, but now let's go, let's talk about how these things actually work. All right, now this is where it's going to get kind of complicated, but it is actually really simple once you understand it. 
Uh, so I'm going to slide over here and try to put my little drawing up here. Um, so coming in, you've got your high pressure, and it's coming in to that first little zone. And as you see, there's that little poppet valve there. And in the diagram here, it's open. Um, and then you've got your top chamber there, which shows your outgoing pressure. And then above that, you're going to have that diaphragm. And then you're going to have the spring. And then you're going to have your set screw at the top. Now, what happens is that spring is pushing down on that diaphragm. Say it's never had any water in it. Um, and you're turning the water onto it this first time. There's not going to be any pressure on that diaphragm. All that, that spring is pushing it all the way down so that the poppet valve is open. Now, as soon as the water comes through that poppet valve and it inflates that diaphragm, um, it's going to balance out on that spring. And when that pressure balances out with the pressure on that spring, it will close that poppet valve which is how it regulates the pressure. It's using the downward force of that spring and the water pressure to equalize itself. Now, the ones we use work on the outgoing pressure. There are some that work on the incoming pressure, but it's the same basic thing. Uh, you've got the pressure from the spring and the pressure from the water pushing on that diaphragm, and when they balance out, that poppet will close and that's how it works. Now, if those pressures are jumping back and forth, same thing. It's still working off of that diaphragm. It just means that poppet and that diaphragm and that spring are gonna be hopping back and forth a little bit more than they normally would. So what's that mean for us as residential new construction plumbing? Why do we need a PRV? Why do we need a pressure regulator? Um, it's because we test our plumbing at rough end on our waterline side uh, at or above 100 PSI to make sure none of our fittings blow off and that everything's good and we're not going to have any accidents later on. Um, now, me personally, I would like to see it tested at or above 120 PSI because I know that's where the relief on my water heater is going to open up is at 120 PSI and it's going to start dumping that water off of it so we're not endangering our plumbing system where we might have a fit and break or blow off or something like that. So that's kind of what the pressure regulator does for us. Say the water meter spikes to like 180 in the middle of the night. Well, we've got a control there. That pressure reducer is going to keep it right where we set it at, at 75 or, or, or whatever. Maybe it's something lower, but it's going to hold it right there. It's also going to help balance the system. If, if we've got something fluctuating up and down between 50 and 100 PSI, we can regulate it to 75 PSI and get a good balanced water pressure throughout the whole house. Well, I hope you learned something. I, I hope that wasn't too hard to grasp. Uh, thanks a lot, guys.